the best way to lose weight there's no doubt about it you have to take in less calories than you burn now, there's no way around it uh, no matter what diet there is whether it's low carbs high carbs low fat high fat whatever unless you're consuming fewer calories than you burn you're not going to really lose weight but there's still a lot of ideas and tips that are strewn about that supposedly will help you lose body fat uh, and some of them don't hold much scientific credence so let's talk about that today one thing that you're often told is to always eat breakfast uh, because breakfast is supposedly the most important meal of the day the word breakfast literally means break fast because you supposedly haven't eaten all night and now you're having a meal so you've basically fasted and you're breaking your fast by eating a meal well with the popularity of intermittent fasting these days and various other types of fasting a lot of people are purposely skipping breakfast uh, you know to make sure they fast for anywhere from 16 24 hours whatever there's nothing there's no real problem with that whatsoever uh, you know uh, the studies that have looked at whether uh, skipping breakfast had an, has an effect on weight loss have shown uh, that uh, it really doesn't make much difference wh whether you skip breakfast or not uh, one study showed however that skipping breakfast did increase cholesterol levels uh, I'm not sure why In another study people who skipped breakfast ended up eating 144 ca calories more at lunch compared with people eating a morning meal but at the end of the day their total caloric intake was still about 400 calories lower as I said skipping breakfast is a form of intermittent fasting which has, you know actually is very good for your metabolism uh, it turns out that a lot of uh, some of the uh, ideas about eating breakfast how you lose weight uh, it, it was re related to a survey of, of uh, national weight re weight control registry members who had lost weight and kept it off for about five years most of these people said they ate breakfast regularly five years is the magical number in other words if you lose weight and keep it off for five years there's a theory that you could uh, kind of retrain your thermostat in the brain that controls body fat and eating behavior so now you can maintain a lower weight the rest of your life much easier but it takes about five years to do that uh, uh, however with all that being said there was a recent study published just about a week or so ago that involved people involved in weight training body bulls, whatever and they compared two groups one group consumed breakfast the other group didn't the people that consumed bre uh, breakfast gained more muscle than the people that didn't consume breakfast probably because they were consuming more protein maybe they weren't consuming a lot of protein during the day so they needed to consume the uh, protein at breakfast and a lot of breakfast uh, are high in protein for example eating eggs or some type of meat or something like that they're considered high protein breakfast another another thing that you're told to do is uh, don't weigh yourself every day because it could discourage you but turns out that weighing yourself every day actually can give you some motivation to lose weight a six-month study on people with overweight or obesity people who got this on a scale every day and consume fewer calories and lost 6.6% .6 of their body weight on average compared with people in the control group who lost less than 1% of their body weight in another study researchers were looking at the weighing habits of 40 people with overweight and found those who took breaks of longer than one month had a greater uh, risk of weight gain uh, uh, so in other words I'm not sure why that is but there's nothing wrong with weighing yourself unless it's going to get you discouraged or give you false hopes for example if you're on a low carbohydrate diet the first let's say eight nine ten days you're going to lose a lot of water weight because you don't consume carbohydrate glycogen breaks down in the body glycogen is stored carbohydrate each gram of glycogen is stored with 2.7 grams of water so you can use you're going to lose a good amount of water the first week and that could go either way it could encourage you and you know could give you false the false belief that you're using you're losing a lot more fat than you're actually losing because it's mostly water on the other hand it could be uh, very uh, uplifting in the sense that uh, you know that you're seeing changes on the scale so it depends on how you look at it uh, another popular technique uh, uh, some, some people use are what they call juice cleansers uh, proponents of juice cleansers uh, cleanses 
said you can, you can lose up to 10 pounds in a week and rid your body of tech toxins. I wrote an article on my uh, in my Applied Metabolics newsletter about the so-called detoxification programs and supplements. Basically, it's all BS. Your body has a complete capability of detoxifying through your liver and kidneys. Juice, uh, it's living on juice to reduce toxins is nonsensical. In one study, women drank a, a lemon juice and syrup mixture with less than 500 calories for uh, seven days. They did lose weight and they reduced insulin resistance. But unfortunately, you know, a diet of 500 calories a day is impossible to get enough protein. So if you continue that for that, that, that study only lasted a week. It's not going to cause much of a problem. But let's say you continue a juice fast for let's say a month most of your weight loss is going to be protein from your muscle which means you're going to wind up with a low metabolism which makes it easier to regain the weight also juices tend to be high in sugar but low in protein as i said it's a bad combination of appetite and uh health so uh, another, another idea bruno please another idea is bruno uh, hold on a second let me bring bruno you know this hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Bruno had to get a word in edgewise here. Uh, another one that's uh, it's often uh, this this I kind of disagree with uh, the idea that uh, uh, that you, that you uh, that you shouldn't that you shouldn't lose weight quickly. You know, they say that's bad, uh, but the truth of the matter is that the studies haven't shown much difference between people who lost weight fast and lost weight more rapidly. One study found that people who lost weight quickly during the first month were five times as likely to have lost 10% of their body weight within 18 months compared to those who started off losing weight more slowly. The only problem with losing weight fast, like with crash diets, is again, a lot of the weight loss is going to be lean tissue, muscle, and protein, which is always bad. So I still think that you should not lose weight quickly. You should only go for uh, maybe two to three pounds a week at most. Actually, one to two pounds. That's what they've shown in studies. People who lose weight, whether it's bodybuilders or anybody else, if you lose weight at a rate of one to two pounds a week, you have a much greater chance of keeping the weight off when the diet ends and people who lose much greater amounts of weight because, again, they've lost a lot of lean tissue and the metabolism goes down. Uh, another thing uh, that uh, people who are trying to lose weight are frequently told is to focus on, on cardiovascular training or aerobics rather than weight training. W the idea there is that your body burns fat only in the presence of oxygen. So the only way to really lose fat is with cardio uh, or aerobic exercise. Uh, but um, you can. I, I think it's very important to do cardiovascular exercise, not only beca uh, because it strengthens and, and, uh, the cardiovascular system, but I think there it is a truism that your body does only burn fat in the presence of oxygen. However, weight training also helps you, uh, you know, lose body fat because when you build muscle, your resting metabolism goes up, and your insulin, you you get uh, a better insulin sensitivity. So the best answer is to do both. You want you want to do weight training and and cardio workouts. You just don't have to go crazy on the cardio workouts. I see a, there's a. <laughs> I go to Gold's Gym in Venice. Uh, there's a, a young woman I see every night there. She does the. Uh, she does. Uh, I see her in the cardio room. She does uh, cardiovascular work for like two and a half hours, and she's like skeletal. I mean, to say she's anorexic is putting it mildly. This woman has not a drop of muscle. You can see the bone sticking out of her shoulder. She she has a mental issue. Uh, you know, I think she looks looks in the mirror and still sees fat. That's classic anorexia, but hopefully most people are not like that. So uh, another another frequent uh, admission for people that uh, want to lose body fat, they tell you to not to eat foods that contain fat. I wrote an article in my uh, Applied Metabolics newsletter explaining exactly how eating fat can actually help you burn fat. And this idea was originally pioneered by Vince Garanda who was a uh, notable bodybuilding trainer of the 60s, very famous bodybuilding trainer. He used to tell his uh, students or his clients in his gym to actually consume fat because he said fat helps to burn fat. 
when I first heard that, I had my doubts, knowing that each gram, each uh, I'm sorry, each gram of fat contains nine calories uh, compared to four calories in protein, four calories in carbohydrates. I said it doesn't make sense, but the truth of the matter is that uh, there are metabolic changes which are too complex to get into in this video. However, if you subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, I explain in detail how consuming fat can actually help burn fat. Uh, there's, uh, certain forms of fat are actually notable for helping to stimulate fat loss. One example is conjugated linoleic acid, which uh, not all studies, but some studies show helps reduce body fat and improves insulin sensitivity. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acids, uh, as, as, as found in fish oil and fatty fish, also increase insulin sensitivity. By doing so, they help you to burn fat. Uh, I don't think that it's a good idea to eat a lot of saturated fat uh, because that's the kind of fat that is more, more likely to stick on you, you know, because of the high calorie content. On the other hand, if you're keeping your carbohydrate intake very low, then the saturated fat intake becomes irrelevant because of the fact that you're not getting carbohydrates, your body will take the saturated fat you're consuming and burn it as energy, so it's not going to make you fat right there. Uh, another, another uh, uh, this one I've heard for years, they tell you to eat every two to three hours. Uh, the, the idea is that eating small meals more often keeps your metabolism at a steady rate, also maintains blood glucose, and there is some truth to that, but in one small study, researchers gave two groups the same number of calories, either in two large meals or spread between seven small meals, and they found no difference in calories burned between the two groups. Controlled studies have shown that eating many small meals does not result in greater weight loss compared to eating three or fewer meals a day. What's more, researchers linked frequent meals after weight loss surgery with diminished weight loss six months after the procedure. The problem with snacking or eating small meals more often is so that you wind up eating more calories or consuming more calories than your body burns. There's one exception to the rule. Again, if you tend to be hypoglycemic, in other words, if you have low blood sugar, some people have a, a, a situation where they, their blood sugar drops very fast after a meal. Uh, in that case, it is better to have smaller meals more often, maybe f as many as five or six meals a day. Uh, but the purpose there is not so much weight loss, but rather to keep a, a more stable glucose. But for all others, you don't have to eat every two to three hours. People wonder about how often should I take in protein. Well, consider this. Amino acids stay in your blood an average of five hours after a meal, right? And remember, it takes time for the meal to digest. But protein synthesis peaks in two hours. After two hours, it makes no, no difference how many amino acids you have in your blood. Protein synthesis is off. But the amino acids will still circulate in the blood for a full five hours. There's no need to eat every two hours. That's ridiculous. I know when I was a kid, uh, I didn't know much about nutrition. And I, I thought that I had the idea that uh, eating more often would, you know, especially protein, would put muscle on. At one point, I was setting an ar alarm clock and eating uh, actually while I was sleeping. Every two hours, I'd wake up and have some protein. This lasted all of one day. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it lasted two days because after two days, the lack of sleep I could barely move, much less work out, so that didn't, that didn't work out very well. Another thing uh, that they tell you to do is uh, focus only on calories. In other words, as I said at the beginning of this uh, video, the, the bottom line of all diets is calories. You have to take in cal uh, you know, fewer calories than you, uh, you have to uh, c consume fewer calories than you burn through activity, but you have to also consider that th the type of calories that you eat has a giant effect on hunger, appetite, and hormones that control weight. So, uh, in other words, uh, some foods make you hungrier than others, and it'll make it harder to stay in a diet, so it'll actually inhibit weight loss. Uh, in other words, uh, for example, processed sugars, processed fats, will stimulate hunger a lot more than eating natural, unprocessed carbohydrates and unprocessed foods. So. Also, uh, high, high protein eating, concentrated high protein foods, will will lead to hormone changes that lead to increase uh, increased feelings of fullness and satiety or reduced hunger. So again, it does. Uh, and also, remember, protein has a thermic effect, higher than carbs or fat. I mean, and, and it takes more calories just to metabolize it than it does for carbohydrate or fat.
So, uh, also studies have demonstrated that calorie intake naturally goes down when you restrict carbs. Uh, I found that to be true of myself. Uh, I eat my, my preferred diet when I was in bodybuilding competition were low carbohydrate diets. As I wrote in my newsletter, I started out with a ketogenic diet for six, seven weeks, which is like maybe 25 grams of carbs a day. Then I'd segue after that for a couple of months into a low carb diet where I'd eat about maybe 100 to 150 grams of carbs a day. But here's the interesting part. The, 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 the reason why low carb diets, and this is why I still argue with people about this when they say low carb diets are bad, only low carb diets was only only being on low carb diets that was the only way I was able to control my appetite because after a couple of weeks on a ketogenic diet I literally had to force myself to eat I had no appetite whatsoever and and it actually made dieting very easy because I didn't I had no desire to eat and and that makes a big difference when you're trying to lose body fat uh, and that, that that's about it really for for this topic I mean uh, again, there's a lot of myths uh, and misconceptions about uh, body fat loss. Uh, that some of them, some of these are borderline. Again, depending on the individual, uh, you know, as as far as like the one about losing weight rapidly is not bad. I I tend to think I disagree with that. It's it's bad because the more the the quicker the more rapidly you lose weight, the greater the chance of losing muscle mass, which will lead to a uh, recidivism effect where you wind up gaining back all the fat. So uh, there you have it. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic aids, uh, anti-aging research you can use today, fat loss techniques that really work, uh, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com, where each month I, uh, I, I I give you 40 to 50 pages no advertisement pure unvarnished evidence-based information uh, when you subscribe I'll send you an invitation to join my private applied, applied metabolics Facebook page where every day I post new information on medicine nutrition and exercise general health I also have an email portal on my applied metabolics website where current subscribers only can send me short questions limited uh, I, you know, I have subscribers that send me literally 10 questions every day, same people. Uh, you're not going to get that for $10 a month on the unlimited questions. I'm sorry. Nobody does that, and I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'll answer short questions, but don't don't abuse it by trying to ask a million questions. It's not going to work. I, I just won't answer them after a while. Uh, so that's about it. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever had, go go have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. You've heard Bruno here being a little disruptive today, but that's okay. Take care.